Welcome to this month's recipe segment. My name is Kelly Burgess and I'm the Family Consumer Sciences Extension Agent with the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service in Allen County. I have a wonderful classic fall recipe for you today. We will be making a version of pumpkin pie, but you know me, I'm always uh, adding a little bit of a healthy twist onto our favorite classics. Uh, so today's pumpkin pie recipe might look a little bit different than your classic one. I'm actually using a recipe for something called Kushaw pie. So if you've never heard of a Kushaw before, it is a, a squash that is shaped kind of like a gourd. It's wide at the bottom and then skinnier up at the top with a neck uh, that kind of folds over just a little bit. Um, it's green and white striped um, and they're fairly large. They can be 10 to 20 pounds. Um, so I'm actually using a Kentucky Field Pumpkin instead of a Kushaw squash. Uh, but the great thing about all of these winter squashes is that they're very interchangeable with one another in cooking and baking. Uh, they have a similar consistency, a similar texture, um, and similar vitamin uh, and nutrient content as well. So it's no problem to swap out a pumpkin for a Kushaw, a Kushaw for a pumpkin, whatever you have on hand. Uh, so like I said, today is a modified version of pumpkin pie. So I'll talk just a little bit about our ingredients before we get started. Started. We have two cups of pureed pumpkin. Um, of course, now you could use a canned version of this, but if you have a fresh pumpkin, uh, let's use that while it's in season uh, with our Kentucky Proud Produce items. We have a quarter cup of butter, a half cup each of white sugar and brown sugar, two eggs, and then uh, one teaspoon each of vanilla extract and lemon extract. So that is going to give this a little bit of a fresh, different flavor. And then we have a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon and a half teaspoon of nutmeg. So very simple ingredients. I actually had almost everything I needed uh, already other than our graham cracker crust. So of course, if you choose to make your own crust, that's wonderful. Um, but you can do it the simple way with using a graham cracker crust that is already prepared that you can purchase at the store. So I'll go ahead and uh, start on our recipe. The first thing we're going to do is add our pureed pumpkin to our large mixing bowl. And we're really not going to dirty a lot of dishes in this recipe, which is awesome. I have a bad habit of doing that, so I'm glad that this recipe is going to keep it simple and easy for us. So we have our pureed pumpkin. We also have our quarter cup of butter. So that is half a stick of butter, uh, just to make it a little bit easier uh, to measure out for you. So really, uh, not a lot of fat in this recipe. That's one of the reasons why it's a little bit healthier of a version than our traditional pies. Uh, we also have a half cup of brown sugar, and we have a half cup of white sugar. So we're gonna add these together and go ahead and blend these first few ingredients. So I'm gonna try and mash up this brown sugar a little bit because we do wanna pack that when we measure it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that blended up a little bit and turn on our mixer so it'll get loud for just a minute. All right, so now that we've got those first few ingredients blended together, you'll notice that you can still see some pieces of butter. That's not a huge problem uh, because we're gonna blend it again once we add the rest of our ingredients. And while it bakes in the oven, it will soften up and get uh, mixed throughout uh, in the baking process. I did uh, have the butter softened before I started, but it doesn't need to be completely melted. So I'm gonna move this off to the side just a little bit, and we're gonna focus on cracking our eggs. So the recipe calls for two eggs, and you'll notice I have a separate bowl. Uh, we always like to do this just in case uh, there's something not quite perfect about our egg. We don't ruin all of our wonderful ingredients that we've already put in the bowl. So I'm just gonna add those eggs one at a time. That way we make sure that if there is a problem with our egg, we can get that rendered, whether it's a shell or whether you find out that maybe it's not good anymore. Uh, we can get that fixed before we even put it in our mixing bowl. All right, next we just have our extracts and our spices. Uh, so we're gonna just 
Add those in one at a time. Whoops, <laughs> gets a little slippery there. And then we'll add our cinnamon and nutmeg. And you'll notice that those sound like a couple things that might be in your traditional pumpkin pie spice. Uh, we're not using the spice blend. You could if you wanted to. Um, another option is you can make your own pumpkin pie spice blend. Uh, traditionally, that is a little bit more costly in the store. So if you want to mix your own blend with the individual spices, you can. Or you can just stick with these basic couple that we're using today. So I'll do just a little bit more blending, and then we'll be almost ready to add this to our pie shell. Okay, so like I said, um, you'll still be able to see some of those pieces of butter. That's not a huge problem. Um, so we are gonna just kind of clean off our beaters just a little bit. And I do have my oven preheated to 400 degrees. Uh, so we'll go ahead and have that ready, but we'll only be cooking it at 400 for about 15 minutes. And then we'll want to back that temperature off to about 375. Uh, the reason we want to do that is so that our crust doesn't burn in the meantime, but it is still a high enough temperature to allow our pie to set up. So I'll go ahead and clean off this other mix or a beater a little bit and just tell you a little bit about the nutrition of pumpkin and our winter squashes. They are an excellent source of vitamin A and a great source of vitamin C. Uh, not only do they offer those uh, vitamins and minerals that we all need, but they're also high in their fiber content um, and low in calories also. One half cup pumpkin, which is a serving size, only has a uh, 40, no, I believe a cup has 40 calories. So it's a very low calorie option, uh, making this one of, our, one of our favorite healthy fall recipes, whether you eat it for dessert or for breakfast. So we're simply gonna add our mixture into our pie shell. I'm gonna distribute that evenly. And then we will be ready to pop this in our preheated oven and get your kitchen smelling amazing. I wish that I could transfer the, if smell was a component that could come over TV, uh, I think you would all be ready to try this recipe at home. So we are gonna go ahead and get that cleaned up. And then we'll just be putting this in the oven uh, at 400 degrees for 15 minutes. And then we'll leave it on 375 uh, for another 45 minutes. So we're looking at about a total of one hour of baking time. Um, I have this aluminum foil here. Uh, as I was practicing the recipe, I noticed that the edges of my pie shell got a little bit crispy uh, when they were in the oven. So if you need to cover it in order to keep that crust from burning, aluminum foil is a great tool, even if you just use it for uh, part of your time in the baking process. So uh, we have several ways for you to get this recipe. Uh, you can email barry.hyatt at nctc.com. You can also find the recipe online uh, at nctc.com. Or you can search Plate It Up Kentucky Proud or find Plate It Up Kentucky Proud on Facebook. Uh, so once again, thank you for joining us for our October recipe segment. Uh, we hope that you make uh, maybe this new version of pumpkin pie at home. Give it a shot and maybe even uh, add it to your Thanksgiving uh, menu for this year. So thanks for joining us and we hope to see you again next month.